In October 1783, Thomas Jefferson journeyed here to Harper's Ferry, a then trading post at the confluence of the Shenandoah and Potomac Rivers. Standing here and looking east, Jefferson described the view as one of the most stupendous scenes in nature. But this peaceful spot would become the site of a deadly siege on the eve of the Civil War. In 1794, President George Washington chose Harper's Ferry as the site for a new armory that would also manufacture arms and munitions for the U.S. Army. He knew that the Shenandoah River's currents could power the mills necessary to make weapons. The remains of those mills still line the river just below this historic town. But as the Civil War edged closer in the mid-1800s, Harper's Ferry proved that it might not be the safest place for a U.S. armory. And the first threat didn't come from Confederate troops. It came as a surprise ambush from a now legendary abolitionist, a man some say was America's very first terrorist. On the night of October 16th, 1859, a white man named John Brown and 18 of his anti-slavery supporters approached Harper's Ferry from Maryland to the Northeast and captured the town's bridges. Their mission was to launch an assault on the U.S. Armory, steal a cache of weapons, and use them to arm runaway slaves so they could launch their own attacks on slave owners and foment a rebellion. When Brown and his men arrived in Harper's Ferry, they were all armed and ready to die for their abolitionist cause. They quickly stormed the armory and started taking hostages. But almost immediately, the plan started to go terribly wrong. A passenger train happened to pull into Harper's Ferry, and Brown's men stopped it, but then decided to allow it to continue on. When the train later arrived in Baltimore, passengers alerted authorities that Harper's Ferry was under attack. By then, Brown had moved his hostages here to this brick building, the armory's fire engine house. The next morning, as the sun rose over Harper's Ferry, townspeople and local militia began firing on Brown's men. Four of them tried to escape by swimming across the rivers, but they were shot dead in the water. And the worst was yet to come. About 24 hours after the siege began, 90 U.S. Marines arrived from Washington by train. Under the command of Colonel Robert E. Lee, the Marines stormed the engine house, freed the hostages, and captured Brown and his men. When it was over, John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry cost 17 lives, including 10 of Brown's men, several townspeople, and the mayor of Harper's Ferry. John Brown was convicted of treason and sentenced to death.